I'm Hacksaw, this is TNT, and we have been put in charge of making dinner. So that means we're going outside. That means we're smoking meats tonight. On the menu we've got a meatloaf, uh, some spur ribs, and some chicken boobs. So without ado, let's get started. Season the spur ribs. Keep it real basic. Sea salt from the sea. Ground black pepper from the ground. Old world seasoning from another time. All right, season into some spur ribs. It's a pretty complicated and technical process of sprinkling stuff on it. You might have an inclination to think you put too much and if you ever find yourself in that thought process, always just add a little bit more. Sprinkle, 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 la la la, and now it's the fun part. All right, now we are out here at the locker. Uh, we're using the, the smoker today. Um, so far, we've soaked our chips in water. Uh, we've set up the, the locker. We've used some aluminum foil uh, to try to keep it clean. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to clean smoke uh, off of things, but it is very difficult. So this makes the cleanup process a breeze. Uh, so we got our place for our, our, our uh, meatloaf, uh, drippings for the meatloaf. We've got a uh, place for the chicken boobs and we got a place for the ribs. So it's all ready to go. All we gotta do is uh, crank it up and uh, get it warming up. You wanna warm it up for at least 15 minutes or so before you put any meat in it uh, so that you don't end up with uh, salmonella problems with it being uh, in the danger zone too long. We like 250. Yeah, around 250 is good. And uh, let's go, uh, let's put the chips in. You want the bone side down, fat on top, to trap the smoke that's coming up from underneath. All right, now that the ribs are in, uh, it's time to turn our uh, attention to the meatloaf. I had intended on flying in a wonderful, wonderful meat loafer that I had come across, but due to financial restrictions, I only could book their arms. Not to be alarmed, they assured me that it would be just as good. I'm as interested as you are.
All right, well, we don't like to let the heat escape, um, but got to change the chips, got to put the loaves on. So here we go. All right, so unfortunately, as you saw, I dropped a chicken breast, so I, I had nothing to do with this. Yeah, that's that's completely my fault. But what are you gonna do? But we still gotta sauce up these ribs and uh, change these chips. All right, uh, we are now on hour four of this uh as you can see not really smoking much anymore so those uh chips are probably spent but we we're getting pretty close so it's temperature time uh, you can see we got a good bark on those ribs uh, the bone is starting to pull away there so we're probably getting pretty close with that uh let's uh let's see Ribs have been in there four hours or so. So let's see where our meatloaf is. Right. What are we looking for? Uh, I would say that we're looking for about 160, 170, somewhere around there. So it looks like we got a little time left. Yeah, looks like we're only at about 1.30, so we'll close it up. Uh, I, normally, I would change the chips. Do the poultry. Oh, yeah. Normally, I would change the chips uh, at this time, but they've had a lot of, uh, um, a lot of smoke time. All right, it looks like the chicken is done, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. So I think we're done. We're going to check the temperature one more time. Uh, again, the magic number is 160. And then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Right, last thing's the ribs. Another successful meal here at Hacksaw's house. Um, I think the meatloaf turned out great. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, comment below if you uh, have anything that you would like to specifically see. Uh, just real quick, uh, special thanks to Critchfield's Meats, Wessex Brewing, Moonlight Barbecue, all from around here in Central Kentucky. Good night, y'all.